All right, I want to welcome you to another Pod for Israel and special prayer podcast. We have a series of, of podcasts that we're focusing on prayer and specifically how to pray for Israel. And uh, Eris shared with us on the last podcast. If you haven't seen that, you'll have to check that one out. And he shared about kind of the general vision of like, why pray for Israel? What's going on? And we're going to dive into Israeli society today. And we have Dr. Golan Broshi with us today. And one of the things that Eris pointed out yesterday was a lot of people believe that this veil that's spoken of in 2 Corinthians 3.14 says, But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because this veil is taken away Mm -hmm. in Messiah. So we have this veil, and a lot of people think it's just simply just a supernatural thing where they're reading the Bible every day. They're immersed in the Bible and they just cannot see Yeshua. They just can't see it. Well, (laughs) that was true during the time of of Paul's writing. You know, they were reading the actual Torah and, and the prophets and so forth. But today it's different. Really different. It's changed. So like as we pray, and as we pray specifically with this scripture here, that that veil would be lifted off in Messiah, we have to understand it's not just so that they could see, because we need them to actually read their scriptures once again. I would say the veil of tradition. Yeah, should be, should be a little bit off, you know, because right. Jews are immersed in tradition and it doesn't matter if they're secular or ultra-Orthodox. They're immersed in their own tradition and their own thing, doing yeah. their own thing. I remember having a conversation with a, a man just a little while ago and we were talking about Elijah the prophet and Mount Carmel and when he called down fire. And it's like most kids who've been through Sunday school would know, like, uh, like even if you're not like ultra, you know, reading the Bible every day, you know about Elijah calling down fire. And he was like, what are you talking about? I was like, yeah, Eliyahu on Mount Carmel. I don't know, what, where's that? It's in the Tanakh. And he's like, I don't know about that. And so I was like, wow, what do you even know no. about Elijah the prophet? You know, what's what's really good about Israel and the educational system that because there's no separation of state and church, and I'm talking about the rabbinic church, of course, there's no right. separation. Kids in school are learning the Bible. So our kids are learning, but the focus is in, on the five books of Moses and some of these, Joshua a little bit, but they don't get too far. They never get to the prophets in school. They, so, so the good thing is they read the Bible. They study the Bible even in secular schools in Israel. That's really but, interesting. But, but it's yeah. maybe 40% of the whole stories. So I'm not surprised that the, he didn't know that story. <laughs> and I think you were share, share with us a little bit. I, some of the stuff we've kind of covered in previous podcasts about the rabbinic reformation. But in a way, it's kind of frowned upon, right, to, to read the actual scriptures. It's more like re, you need to read the Talmud. Uh, exactly. Otherwise and, that, and that's what every, every Jew now, as we speak, that is studying in the yeshiva, and then when I'm say when I'm saying yeshiva, mm-hmm. everybody knows what I mean. I mean, do you have an English? Uh, uh, yeah, the yeshiva. It's their Bible. It's their Bible school. Yeah, but you when you say. say Bible, it would be deceiving because yeah. in yeshiva you don't study the Bible. <laughs> the and Talmud that's my, school, I guess. Yeah. Exactly. So every Jew that studies in the yeshiva doesn't study the the the, the, the Bible or the, right. the Tanakh, the Old Testament. They study the Talmud, the Gemara. Because even in the Talmud itself, it says, okay, but when you're five, for you're five years old, you start studying the Bible. But after you're 10, it's the Mishnah and the Talmud for the rest of your life. So, so, so mm. studying the Mishnah and the Talmud, it's the rabbinic literature. Of course, it's, it's going to take a miracle to find Yeshua in the rabbinic literature. Right. And that's another reason why our people are, are, are lost in that forest or deep, deep ocean of, 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 of tradition and that, that, that always focuses on the oral law and the rabbis mm. and the, rabbis, uh, the rabbinic tradition. Right. So, you know, like Paul also spoke in 1 Corinthians 14, 15, that we should pray in the Spirit and pray with understanding. And that's what we're trying to do here is we're trying to bring some insight, some understanding of how to pray. And I think it's even interesting to me because as I dive into Israeli society, kind of some of the problems, the issues that we face, the struggles that we face here in the society, mm-hmm. These are also things that we need to pray for our culture in general. This is exactly. stuff that we have to examine our own hearts yeah, about. We're not isolated here. Yeah. We're, we're affected by, by everything that is happening all around the world. And sometimes we want to be on the front of some things, uh, some trends. The Jews wants to be, want to be on the front and not, not on the back seat. So, right. so, so yeah, everything, everything that happens in the world, in Israel, we see it um, magnified, magnified. So point number one, we talked about the veil 
which is not just just a supernatural thing alone. This is also getting them back into Scripture exactly. itself, if, away from this rabbinic commentary of the Talmud into the Torah and the Tanakh. You know, like that's important. So as we pray for the veil to be lifted off, we need to pray for them to come back and, to this. And if you and if you and you can add to that prayer that, that they would stumble upon the New Testament, because if Amen. an Israeli, especially Israeli Jew, is reading the New Testament, he's shocked. Because he thinks it's a recipe for anti-Semitic. It is something that was written right. in the, by the Pope. And when yeah. you read, when you're starting reading the, the, the Gospel of Matthew, you see, what is this? How come, how come nobody told me this? This is like the, the most Jewish Israeli story in the world. Yeah. Remember, the Talmud was, was, was written or edited in, in, in Babylon, outside the country. The New Testament was, was coming from Israel. This is an Israeli right. faith. It's, yeah. not a, it's, it's not an exile faith like, the, like, yeah. the rabbinic, like rabbinic Judaism. Rabbinic Judaism is an exilic faith, hmm. exilic theology, religion. The New Testament Judaism is an Israeli religion, Israeli faith. So That's if right. you get Israelis to read that, they're shocked. They're yeah. like, what is this? Yeah. These are Jews in Israel believing them that they're walking and eating and, 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 and seeing the Messiah. Yeah. yeah? So, so, so not, only, not only the Old Testament, if you pray for Israelis to, 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 to reach, to, 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 get, to get the New Testament, to read the New Testament, because it's going to be the revelations of, 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 of their lives. Amen. Like for Amen. me. Yeah. Amen. Well, so as we look at the society, we're going to be looking at from Orthodox to secular to all the different aspects, how to pray for each one of these tribes. And so we're going to kind of break down uh, I, I like to, it's not the 12 tribes of Israel like <laughs> Naphtali and so forth. It's like a it's, demographical tribe. These are demographical tribes. It's a very tribal society here in Israel. Depending on what part of society you come from, it can very, very include like protected and isolated or, or kind of at war with another tribe. And, and, and we're not even talking about, uh, about Arab, Arab Israelis and foreign workers, yeah. which are not Arab and not Jews. We're talking only about the seven, a little bit more over seven million Jews that are here. There's so, you know, there's every, everything. You can yeah. find everything from secular to religious extremes. And what, we, and, what, and what religious people are talking now, they're talking about the spectrum. Mm. from zero to 100. So zero could be, you know, just a nominal uh, religious Jew, a little bit tradition here mm -hmm. and there. And 100 on the spectrum would be the ultra-Orthodox, which is almost like a cult, you know? Yeah. So, so every religious person you meet is, is telling you, I'm somewhere on the spectrum, you know? Somewhere right. on that line. And some of them are, are, are even saying, we don't want the spectrum. Hmm. We're out of the, we don't want that, to play that game anymore. Don't even call us religious. As I, as I was sharing with you before, don't don't even don't even call us really. We're just Israeli Jews. We pick and choose what we want from the tradition. We we're, we're tired of, of of the rabbinic establishment. We just 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 we're just Jews. You know? So this is like if you're looking at these different people on the spectrum, you can define them by uh, their skull caps, right? Exactly. You, you can define them by their kippo. But now it could be deceiving. Or their hats, I guess. But, but <laughs> now it could be deceiving, as I said, yeah. because people are making, everybody wants to be his own rabbi, you know? Hmm. And, and traditionally, you had, you, had a, you had a rabbi and he was your, your uh, religious authority. Right. Now many religious Jews are saying, I want to be my own rabbi. Hmm. I want to pick and choose from the rabbinic law what I'm keeping. And what I'm not, and that's most Israel, most Israelis Jews. That's what most Israelis Jews are doing. Hmm. In the Israeli, among seven million Jews that are living in Israel, a little bit over seven million, ten percent, maybe fifteen percent, are ultra orthodox. You know, black and okay. white shirt, black black hat. Ten percent to fifteen. Forty percent or thirty percent are with the uh, with the kippa, with the kippa sruga, uh, a needed kippa. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, right. Zionistical mm -hmm. uh, religious Jews. Um, and the rest are just secular Jews, but they're not completely secular. Yeah. They're traditional. In most of secular Jews, look, my parents are living in the kibbutz. You would call them a atheistic secular Jews, but they celebrated all the holidays. They're really superstitious. They're right. Zionistic, patriotic. Yeah. So, so it's so it's even hard to tell to, to call them secular. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the Israeli, so, so again, there's the spectrum. If, if you, you're talking about the Israeli Jewish society, we're talking about a spectrum of, of tradition keeping mm. religious, religious Jews. And the problem, the main problem is with Yeshua and with the word of God. That's the problem. Right. 
because if, if it's a secular tradition, religious tradition, it never, it, it never touches the Word of God. I don't know why, but we're fleeing from the Word of God. Right. And the Word of God is the best witness for the Messiah. Well, so that brings it to more of a society problem that's exactly. beyond just the Jewish culture. This is even dealing exactly. with the Christian culture is kind of, I'll define my own theology. We step away from the Word of God. We're going to fall into error. It's going to be more difficult. So again, kind of one of those prayer points, if I could just put a point up right now, it's we need to pray for people to come back to the scriptures exactly. again for their truth. And the, the authority, the authority of the Word of God, because right. most Israelis would see the Old Testament as a, as a folklore, you know, as a, it's an historical myth. It has, it has historical ground, you know, but not everything is mystical, but not everything right. is historical. But authority? The Word of God? What, what, what do you mean authority? It doesn't have anything to do with authority over, over my life. That's what yeah. most, most Israeli Jews believe. No authority whatsoever. And especially there, so there's denominational, you know, there's different like the reform. Reform there's, Jews, you know, conservative. conservative. But, it's, but even in that spectrum, you know, like when you get more towards the reform, it's kind of relativism. Relative, it's this universal is faith. a beautiful book. Yeah. Uh, it's a book of history, a book of folklore. <laughs> Especially them. folklore in that yeah. case, yeah. I wish it was more more historical for the reform and even for the for the conservative. But the problem is that even in the ultra orthodox, they don't even see the they right. don't even see the Old Testament because they're always in the Talmud, yeah. always in the rabbinic tradition. They're they're ultra orthodox towards rabbinic tradition, not towards the Word of God. Mm. So when so I just want I just want to tell our, our our listeners and viewers when you see ultra orthodox Jews, remember. The, they're ultra-orthodox towards tradition, not hmm. towards the, the Word of God, towards, right. the, towards rabbinic literature. Right. In fact, this is something you've covered in some of your series and uh, in, in your classes, is many times that oral tradition will blatantly contradict the as, scriptures, as Yeshua and they told side them. with that. As Yeshua told them in Mark 7, when he quoted Isaiah, by the way, he said, by, by, your, by your traditions, you're making the word of God mm, void. That's right. That's, Yeshua wanted to bring them back to the scriptures. And he said, if you, if you have believed Moses, you have believed me. Right. So we know that they don't follow Moses. They follow the rabbis. And, and now we're talking only about the religious Jews. Right. The seculars don't follow anything. <laughs> right. And so, yeah, a lot of people have that idea that pretty much everyone has memorized the Torah. There's all day in the yeshiva reading the Torah. Studying the Torah. No, yeah. we need them to get back to the actual scriptures, to the words that were written by God. And that's one big step. And, of course, the final step, the biggest step, is to get to the New Testament, to read it for themselves and to see the truth and in the pray for the pray for supernatural revelation. <clears throat> Amen. Yes. Yeah, so so the word will become alive. So the word will put on flesh, and they can see Yeshua walking all through the word of God. So pray for supernatural. Mm. If if it's not supernatural, it's not going to happen. So you right. have to pray for a supernatural interference. In interference, uh, you know, interference. So with your work as a professor and uh, apologist and stuff like that, like all the work that we're doing in this Bible college. <laughs> How many people have you seen come to faith through reason? And how many people have you seen come to faith through a supernatural revelation? Every, every single person that I saw come to faith in Yeshua, especially Israeli Jews, it's by supernatural and natural, but by the Holy Spirit. It's the yeah. work of the Holy Spirit. Of course, and that's what, that's what I'm saying. Pray for that. Yeah. Pray for a supernatural revelation of the Word of God. Right. You know, because if, 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 if that happens, if that happens, you know, nothing can, nothing can stop them. And so as we're talking about that spectrum, that could be from the ultra-religious spectrum all the way over to the, secu to the so secular. secular. Yeah. It need, we, that's why we need prayer. That's why we need prayer, guys, is, and, is because this is what breaks through. And that's why I told you, if you can, if you can read from Isaiah, Isaiah 66, the, um, the, the, the latter part of, of verse 2. Isaiah 6, and that's, and that's one of the problems. In a minute, I'll ask you to read from Jeremiah, which even makes it, makes it even more clear. Yeah. But Isaiah 66, the latter part of uh, verse yep. 2. But on this one, I will look. On him who is poor and of a contrite spirit and who trembles at my word. Yeah, and the word trembles in Hebrew is chared. Charedim, chared. Mm. The same word that we call in Hebrew, the old, the, and the ultra-Orthodox yeah, are calling them charedim. 
חרדים. But they're חרדים, they're trembling over, over man's their word. man's tradition. Yeah. God wants them, God is going to look about, about who's, who's going to tremble over his word. Mm. And that's what we want. So pray that Israeli Jews yeah. and Israeli, Israelis at all, uh, in large would, be, would tremble over God's word. Because the problem, and I ask you to read it also, in Jeremiah, um, Jeremiah 9, at the end of verse 5, that they, they refuse, it says, or they, through deceit they refuse to know me. Says, says the Lord, Lord. they refuse to know me. But it's, it, and again, it's a supernatural. It's not, our war is not, of course, with, 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 with men. Yeah? Yeah. It's a supernatural fight. They, somebody's, somebody doesn't want the Jews to read the word of God, to mm. know God. You know, and, and we know who it is, who, who's the deceiver that wants to keep his, the God's people away from God. Yeah? Yeah. So pray for a supernatural revelation of the word of God. Amen. They refuse to know me, God says. We have to do the apologetics work. We have to get the word out, but we need the prayers of the saints. We need people supporting it in prayer exactly. for the supernatural revelation. Exactly, because that's what it's going to take. It's going to take fire from heaven, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit, yeah. to, to penetrate hearts, to open. And, and God is doing it by one, uh, one by one. You know, it's, we hear about the rabbi there, an ortho, ultra orthodox yeah. there that is coming to faith. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, it's always in secret because they don't want to be killed of course, of course, yeah. <laughs> or they don't want to be stoned. Uh, so, but, but God is doing it one by one. It's happening as we speak. So if we were to focus in on the ultra religious, the ultra orthodox, the Haredim. Yeah, and there's so many sects. And there's so many, like, uh, there's so many of these different sects and tribes amongst them. What's some of the points that people need to know about that society, how to pray? Yeah. Like one you just mentioned, even coming to faith, what do they face inside that community? Okay, so you know it's like shunning. You know, shunning with the. In the did you have that uh, that the phrase yeah. to shun somebody, of course, yeah. to ban somebody? Mm -hmm. so, so, so once once they get saved, once once they they meet Yeshua in th through a supernatural uh, intervention of the Holy Spirit, they need discipleship. Right. They need a place to sleep. Yeah. They they, they need somebody to. You know, sometimes they need to learn Hebrew. Because they, 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 they can't speak the language, let alone English. It's a shocking thing. We, we filmed with Eitan way back in the day, and we were there in the old city, right overlooking the Western Wall. And, and you know, we thought, okay, we got to shut down, because all of a sudden a huge group of Haradim came in. And Eitan was like, they will have no clue what I'm speaking, because I'm speaking in Hebrew. I'm like, but they're from Israel. Yeah. They don't know even Hebrew. Yes, <laughs> because the Hebrew the, is broken. In the ultra ultra orthodox, their Hebrew is it, it's mostly Yiddish and it's, yeah, and it's in a, it's 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 a part to, it's it's a part of the plan to keep them to keep them closed in in, in, in a spiritual ghetto, you know, language close everything they know. So when they do come to faith, when Yeshua saves them, mm. they need the support, and that's exactly what we try to do in One for Israel. We don't only disciple yeah. uh, believers. We don't only share the gospel. We try. We try to disciple new believers and and give them um, help. Yeah, the infrastructure. It, it's even like practical, even life skills. Because exactly. if, if you study in the yeshiva your entire life, I mean, there's a lot of efforts the Israeli government is trying to do right now to get them integrated into society, to get them educated. Uh, and because the problem is, is once they leave that society, they're in a big disadvantage. And you want to th you want to hear ironic uh, an ironical thing? What happens now? Just one year ago, a group of of ultra orthodox former orthodox men that left sued the 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 the, the ministry of the minister of education. Mm. Say the minister. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sued them because they didn't have the skills to go out and find a job. Wow. So they sued huh. them. How, but of course, it's not it's not the Minister of Education fault because they have to play you know the political game with the with the ultra orthodox and their educational system. But they sue them, they sue them because they say, we we don't have any skills. We don't know math. We don't know yeah. English. We barely know Hebrew. How can we how can we how can we integrate within the Israeli society? <laughs> so I mean that that's a huge step. So once you step out with your that's why so many so many, I call it the iceberg church. You know exactly that the huge. You know, chunk. population. The huge chunk is underwater, unseen, and you only just see the tip of the iceberg. That's, uh, you know, who actually comes forward to, to talk to us? There's such a, a stigma involved, and so forth. We, we were considered traitors. What, what's the yeah. other? What's another big? So, 
losing your family, losing your society, your way of life, your even means to earn an income and so forth. Those are huge things. What else is kind of facing people that we need but to But I would for? say the biggest stumbling block is the tradition. Yeah. And it doesn't matter where are you in this religious spectrum. If you're ultra uh, secular or ultra orthodox, you yeah. have a tradition and this is, it, bec- it becomes your whole life. Yeah. And the tradition is, 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 is blocking the view of scriptures. Right. Because the, the, the forest is so deep, we say in Hebrew, you don't see the trees. Mm. I don't know if you have that phrase. The, hmm. the forest is so deep, you, be, you barely see the trees because the forest is so deep. So, so the tradition is so huge. It's like the, this mountain that blocks the view of scriptures. Mm. And again, it doesn't matter if you live in a secular kibbutz or, or, or in a spiritual ghetto, ghetto uh, in an ultra-Orthodox society. The tradition that yeah. you're carrying on your shoulder it's, it, it could be a 2,000-year-old tradition, like the Pharisaic, the rabbinic tradition, yeah. or a secular tradition which is 200 years old. Yeah. But again, I think that the major stumbling block in Israel is the tradition that is, that is in, a, in a position with the Word of God. Right. Like you said, you could be a total atheist, and then as you come to faith, your parents, who are total atheists, come at you exactly. with all sorts of religious, you can't because this, and then, and then they bring... Your atheist parents would bring a rabbi in to try exactly. to help you out. Yeah. Because it's, every Jew is in some sense traditional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the Word of God is like the, 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 not the top of the list. Hmm. <laughs> it's like n- nobody, you know? It's just a may- maybe historical stories, maybe. So that's, not a, even that. so that's a good point. So as we think about our Orthodox brothers and sisters, it's like you're coming out of the society, you have the pressure of that, you have the pressure of being found out and and you'd really be on your own. Exactly. But then, you know, discipleship, how do we even disciple these people? And that's part of why we developed this whole online discipleship course. We have like 26 episodes to give people at least a start yeah, of foundation. what it means yeah. to be a follower of Yeshua, what his teachings taught, etc. And I'll tell you what's sad, sad that many ultra-Orthodox are leaving the religion, but they're throwing God in the process. Yeah, they're so disillusioned, dis- disillusioned yeah. from the religion, and they see the religion that they left right. as God, and they don't give, in a sense, they don't give him a chance. Mm. <laughs> so well, we need to show them there's God beyond religion. Right, and that's the beauty of a lot of the people who contact us. They came literally through that route. They forsook religion. They saw the hypocrisy with the rabbis and saw the hypocrisy in that system, and said. There is no God. And then all of a sudden, here comes Yeshua. And they come back into exactly, the faith. Exactly, because poor things, the only God they know is the God of religion. Well, yeah, which That's is pretty, the only God they know. So if they rough. live religion, in a sense, that they're living God, which mm. they didn't even know in the beginning mm. to start with. And we want to show them, no. If you left the religion, that's the first right step towards God. Mm. I always tell, tell you know, the Jews that I meet, mostly religious, I tell them God is an God is anti-religious. It's a, he's an anti-religious God. Mm. Look, most of the arguments Yeshua had, most of the arguments Yeshua had in the New Testament was against the religious leaders. Yeah, the arguments, the the the, the dis- disagreements with the, so, so the religious people were the last ones to see Yeshua in his full identity. Mm as the Son of God, as the Messiah. Mm-hmm. Yeah? So, so, so again, pray pray for, for, for supernatural awakening. Right. Yeah? And breaking Amen. of a tradition. The, and, and again, the, 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 the poor thing is that the, they, they see the religion as representative of God. Yeah. And we don't want them to forsake God when they forsake the religion. Yeah. We want them to forsake the religion and come back to God. Right. Come back to the Messiah. Because yeah. again, as the Messiah said, if you have believed Moses, you, you have believed me. me. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't want them to throw everything. Mm. We want them to, when, when they leave, pray that they, when they leave religion, they would, they, it would be the right step, the first step towards God. So that's, a, that's another great prayer point because one, one of these false narratives that's put out is, oh, you've, you've lost your identity. As, as, as a Jewish. Jew. You're no longer yeah. a Jewish person anymore yes. because you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, that Yeshua is the Be- Messiah. Because of the Rabbinic Reformation, what the rabbis did is unite the identity, the, the religious identity with the ethnic identity, and now it's one identity. So in order to be a Jew, 
you have to follow Judaism. It's rabbinic Judaism. Rabbinic if Judaism. you don't follow rabbinic Judaism, what kind of a Jew are you? And right. we want to show them, no, no, no. Being ethnically, ethnically Jew, uh, Jewish doesn't have to do anything with your theology or with, with your faith, especially not with a rabbinic faith. Mm. But, but, but you, you're right. It's, it's embedded in Jewish identity that if, okay, at least I'm going to keep parts of the tradition, part of my, my Yiddishkeit, right. my, my Jewishness. No, it has nothing to do with your Jewishness. Your Jewishness is ethnically. You're, you, you're ethnically Jew. Now, your, your spiritual path is a whole different thing. So pray again. Pray, right. ex but just pray for clearance. Pr pray for a supernatural interference that would open uh, uh, the, the spiritual eyes of Jewish people. All right. Again, we're we're always putting out apologetics resources. We're always trying to reason, but inside of that, knowing that we need the Holy Spirit to open their eyes for it. Because only you, can, the only. you can talk till yeah. you're blue in the face. It it's going to be God who opens. And that from heart. the New Testament, we know God opens the heart to listen. Mm -hmm. And then when you preach the gospel, when you tell them about Yeshua, there's Amen. somebody to talk to. That that they're, 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 God opens something in their hearts right. to receive. So, open, so that's that's what that's the key point for prayer. Pray for openness of the gospel mm. back. You know, after two thousand years, we're making. You know, it's a full circle. It began here. Yeah. It, it sprang. The, 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 what did Yeshua tell the, the disciples? Start from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, yeah. and and to the rest of the world. Now right. it comes back. The circle in Hebrew. By the way, yeah. I have to tell you, it's the first time after two thousand years that Israelis have the opportunity to hear the gospel in Hebrew after right. 2,000 years. That's Can you believe amazing. it? That's pretty amazing. That's <laughs> amazing. So yeah, we're in a very pivotal time and we're seeing really amazing results. But uh, so yeah. as we talked about Praise the, the Orthodox community, let's, let's circle over to the uh, secular community. Uh, what a lot of people kind of, they just think of everyone's religious here and so forth, but what sort of demographics are we looking at between the secular yes. and religious? So let's say 10% are all Orthodox, black and right. white, black hats, all. Yeah. 40, 30% are, um, the, you, you know, with the with the small head covering. Yeah, the knitted kippa. Keep, knitted kippa. And the rest are secular. But here's the problem. Amongst the secular, and you can see that with your neighbors in, the, in your building. Mm -hmm. I can see that in my neighbors. Even the secular are traditional to what? Th there's a secular spectrum. There's yeah. the religious spectrum, there's the secular. Yeah. How secular are you? I have relatives, relatives from 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 my kibbutz. That they would be they could they would consider themselves ultra secular, ultra atheist. Yeah. And still they would keep many of the rabbinic traditions, especially yeah. in the holidays and the Shabbat and Yom Kippur. So like atheist and you'd still keep kosher. Exactly. You keep kosher. You you keep the you you love the Shabbat. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you, even if you drive your car, but but you love that you don't work at the Shabbat. Oh yeah. And the holidays. Who doesn't like the, the, the feasting on the on the holiday on the food of the holidays, you know? Yeah, and that I mean that brings up a good point of another prayer point is to pray during the holidays. We have Passover and just around like the corner between Purim. the spring Purim. Yeah, Purim as well. Each one of these holiday festivals is a great time to share the gospel because this is a time where people actually are looking back to the the narrative exactly. of the scripture. Exactly. At least they're looking to the narrative, even if it's covered in all sorts of liturgy. Even if they see it as a folklore, but at least they're coming back. Purim. In Purim, we have the book of Esther, a book of salvation hmm. by a courageous woman. You know, Amen. salvation brought to the Jewish people by by one one act of you know act of of course it's the act of God through one courageous woman hmm. Esther you know so well yes we pray during that especially during the holidays for supernatural revelation yeah, it's awesome to go so, back to scriptures so it's always a good prayer point to pray during the holidays pray for people's eyes to be open to see the Messiah in these holidays they all speak of him so clearly and all scripture points to, to Yeshua exactly. as well exactly but it, it's beautiful to see that you know, so they're even celebrating those holidays, even if you're, yeah. you know, ultra atheist. Yeah. But so we need to be praying for that. There's a whole series of apologetics we do and others are doing to defend the truth of the scripture now, what's, and what's with, good against about, atheism. Yeah, what's good about the 50, 60 percent of Israelis that are secular, what's good about it that they're disillusioned from religion. So mm. so when they read the New Testament, let alone the, the Old Testament, they, they can read it from a fresh perspective hmm. and see, it, wait, wait, it doesn't talk about the rabbis. M nothing of rabbinic Judaism that we know of, we, we see in the Bible. Hmm. So, so, so in a sense, the secular people are more open to see Yeshua in the Bible because they right. don't have the bias 
and you hence uh, usually they they don't like the the, the religious uh, the religious establishment because you know that they pay taxes for the religious establishment they so they don't like it so they have a bias against it but they don't have a bias against Yeshua because they they never heard of it you yeah. know most of secular Jews they don't have, they don't they don't mind they even don't mind seeing him as a good rabbi right yeah so so it's a good start you know it's a mm -hmm. good see, see him as a good Jewish rabbi that you know that did everything he could for his people that's a good start. So with the secular Jews, there's lots of opportunities, lots of right. wonderful for the Holy Spirit to, to do wonders. Again, we need to pray for, you know, reasoning, but we need the Spirit, you know? Exactly. Because again, you know, there's a lot of apologetics work to do here. There's a lot of like reasoning of, of the truth of the scriptures and of the existence of God, et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> but we need the Holy Spirit to open their hearts. This is, the, sure. the, again, the, the theme of the prayer should be <clears throat> that the, the Holy Spirit would work in the, in the hearts of people here. Amen. Yeah, so, so again, the Torah could come out of Zion. Again, huh. the Amen. Torah of the Messiah. What's better than yeah. that? Look, how many, how many disciples changed the world? 12, hmm. a dozen disciples? It, it, it took 12 Jews to change the world because of the Messiah. Yeah. Imagine, imagine, imagine what happens when all Israel is going to be uh, get saved. <laughs> Amazing. This is going to be incredible, and we see it now happening. So, what's some of the other spiritual struggles that we experience from the secular community? So, so again, we, we said the tradition anyway in the spectrum tradition, tradition but then the, still it, has its pull. Yeah, but in the secular community, it's it's you know the the, the pop culture, the culture that is a yeah. secular Jews just want to be you know uh, like Americans or, or or in the Western world, they're so influenced by the culture. If it's yeah. music and movies and television, they're so influenced. They're they're embracing the culture, and they they want to even elevate the culture. Yeah, we see it of course with with the with the LGBT community in Israel. Yeah, so. So, in, 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 one, in one way, there is ultra-Orthodox, which are in a religious ghetto. On the other spectrum, the, the secular Jews, which are so influenced from, 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 the, from the popular culture right. that, 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 that they don't see, the, you know, they don't even have time for the Bible. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of a, it's a catch-22, because on one side, it's a really huge, amazing open door for our ministry, especially as we reach out through media and through online means, that Israel is one of the highest per capita that spends the most time on phones and, on phones and devices social than networks. anywhere in the world. Yeah. So, so we're talking about even Singapore and stuff like that. They're, they're on their phones 24 seven. They're on YouTube 24 seven. That's where we are. We're on those digital streets. So it's like we're able to meet them where you know, some ministries might try street evangelism and stuff like that to share the gospel on the street. It doesn't really work so well. But online, people are open to receive it. But on the other side, exactly. I say the flip side of that coin is we have a very device addicted, online addicted we have competition. society who, you know, there's, we have the struggle of pornography like everyone else. We have the struggle of, of just the popular culture. being just yeah. the muck of pop culture and so forth is, you know, really kind of raining on the So I want our partners, well. the, the people who, who, who support us and pray for us to look at it as a menu. Israelis have <laughs> a menu and the menu is so vast, so mm. many things to choose from, spiritual things, popular things. We want to make Yeshua the top thing on the menu. Yeah. Start there. If we want to put Yeshua on the menu, put him on the map, we're here. You know, Google has some tools, especially for advertisers, that you can see what people are searching for. Mm. And you know what, amazing fact, there's more people searching for Jesus and Yeshua than there is rabbi, Torah, wow. any Incredible. other phrase Incredible. in Hebrew. More than any other rabbi, more than any other religious organization, like many times over. Yeah. So when you, just even the phrase rabbi, so it could be rabbi Yehuda, rabbi whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, there, there's more people looking for him in Israel than anything else. So as you said, if, if it says pray for the peace of Jerusalem, let's pray for the Prince of Peace of Jerusalem, Amen. the Prince of Peace Amen. that would come and dwell in, 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 Israelis, uh, in Israelis' hearts. So pray for the, right. for, for, the, for the Prince of Peace of Jerusalem to come mm. back to his people. That he, that's, that's the people he came first to, right? Yeah. And, they, and, and, and they rejected him so all the Gentiles could be blessed. Amen. Now bring the blessing back, right? Amen. Don't keep the blessing only for yourself. Amen. Share it, why not share it? So I would say one of the last points that I think people need to be praying for, this is something we encounter all the time, 
is kind of the stigma of being a follower of Yeshua with the history of the church in the past. Mm. And I would say also, it's also kind of difficult too to see, you know, first when I came, it was seeing kind of the witness of, you know, some of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and places like that where it just looks like idolatry. Exactly. It looks like it's some foreign God where that's not what Yeshua didn't want us kissing rocks. He didn't want us rubbing statues and, and getting in fights over who washes a window. That's not the representation of who he is. What they've seen through the history, uh, church history and so forth is a major stumbling block that we need to pray for. We need to intercede exactly. humbly like Daniel. And not pray that they leave their religion into a different religion, yeah. which is <laughs> all the more pagan. Pray that they leave religion and enter relationship with the living God. Amen. And it's the God of Israel. Amen. That's his name. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. Israel. That's his name. So we don't pray of a shift of a, of a political party. Go from this party to this party. Go from that yeah. religion to the... Right. Pray for an exit. You know, where mm. this is an exit nation, right? Yeah. Papa, the startup nation. We want to pray for, for Israelis making exit, hmm. leaving religion into a relationship with their God. Hmm. What could be more natural or supernatural than, th hmm. than that, right? That's really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's even, even in a time where the children of Israel were probably following close, closer than they ever had before. When Joshua was taking Jericho, remember how he met the commander of the Lord's armies? We, we believe is probably Yeshua. It was a right? theophany. But basically, here he says, are you for us or, or for us. our enemies? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Neither. I love it, yeah. Either, even though he was fighting, he was helping the Israeli army that Joshua is leading. Joshua, you're asking the wrong question. No, no, <laughs> you're you're fighting for me. This is my war. Exactly. This is my battle. You serve me. This is the focus. God is the focus. Our allegiance is with him. So even at the best state, even at the best state, it's all to him. But I love it when you mention the the so-called Christian history, which is not so nice to, to, with yeah, in we Jewish call it Christian Jewish. history, but it's not very Christian. Yeah, it's in Jewish yeah. eyes, it's not the best. It's not the best memories. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so again, when when our, when our partners are praying, j just pray that men. You know, most most of the arguments that we have against Yeshua mm. are, are are has to do with feelings and with history, with People culture. People hurt us. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 emotional emotional arguments. Yeah. So we need to pray for, for repentance from the church, Amen. you know, repentance, and for Jewish people to see above, above the, the, this, this ugly historical background right. uh, that, that, that the so-called church did to our people, you know, see, see above it, yeah. see, uh, you know. Well, I would recommend, first of all, for our listeners to, to check out a book from Dr. Michael Brown, a good exactly. friend of ours. Exactly. He wrote a book called Our Hands Are Stained With Blood. I highly recommend it. It's a real eye-opener of church history. And when I say church history, again, like you pointed out, uh, those who define themselves as Christians are not necessarily Christians. You have a lot of people doing horrific things in the name, in the of. name of God who are not led by God, who are not walking according to the text. Exactly. And, and that's, where, that's where we have to be grounded in the text. That is the thing that leads us, not men and people. You know, I had an interesting conversation a long time ago with a, with a rabbi where we were discussing, you know, History, you know, like, hey, you know, have you visited this place and that? And and uh, he was like, you know, have you gone to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre? And I was like, you know, I think that if Yeshua was to come back, he'd probably burn the place down. <laughs> and it shocked him. And I said, because it, e even if that was the place, it represents what did you do? Everything with that? he was against, exactly. everything he was against, it represents. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's become something bad. And I said, here's the thing, though. And not to offend people who love that place, is if it's the place, great. But kissing things and getting in fights over the the, the, reli yeah. the re religious nature of it has n doesn't represent him. And I told him, you know, we're not so different. Christianity has had its dark ages, just like Judaism had its dark ages. And if you look at Elijah on Mount Carmel, they were just as unwilling to disown exactly. Baal he as they were Jehovah. He told them, you can't hold you both. You can't hold two, and they just didn't answer him a word. They, they wanted both. Mm. 
And you know, that's sadly the history throughout. And I like to look at the church, not just as, oh, it started from Yeshua, but the church throughout, the church of faith, the congregation, the gathering of faith throughout history. It's important for us to have that perspective. So I met, I met this guy in the park, a religious, a religious guy. He was with his dog. I was taking, the, taking our dog. We met him. And, and he was just, I, I told him about Yeshua, of course. And he said, but what about the, this tradition? What about this? Are you keeping this tradition? I told him, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm not talking about practice now. I'm not talking, I'm not saying anything bad about your tradition. I'm talking about your relationship with your God. Yeah. Not after, you know, first sell right. that. First sell the most important stuff. The relationship with our God. Then find out which tradition you want to keep. That's, you know, that's Bobkis. That's uh, the secondary. What about your relationship? Right. And he, he didn't even know what I was talking about. What do you mean relationship? <laughs> and so I, I continued that conversation with that rabbi telling him, you know, there's always been a remnant. Even in the dark ages of Judaism, even when all had forsaken God, what it was God's answer to Elijah? 7,000. Yeah. I've reserved for myself 7,000. Mm -hmm. Now tell me, 7,000 was not the lion's share of Israel's population. Tell me how dark that must have been. To only have 7,000 believers amongst millions. And you want to, it, it, this is what's happening right now. We have 7 million Jews, a little bit over 7 million Jews. How many followers of Yeshua? That's 30,000, depends on who you 15 ask. 15 to know. 30, the, how many of Again, them are the Jewish? Again, underground believers, we have no clue. Exactly. How many? So God is always keeping a, a, a remnant. There's always been a remnant like that fought against the Nazis, that fought against the evil throughout the ages. But inside of that, we also need to pray ourselves. We need we need to intercede for that that offense to be broken, for that to be healed. So exactly. we do need to pray for healing there. Of course. And it's like Daniel. Remember Daniel when he prayed, he was a righteous man. But when he interceded, he saw the time was coming for Israel's redemption, for them to come back home to return from exile. He started praying and fasting. And he included himself. Yeah, he repented himself. We, we, we have, have seen. sinned. We have forsaken you. Even yeah. though, as far as we see, Daniel was faithful his entire life. He included himself in the failures so this as is, he prayed. What you're saying is really important. So pray that the church will not forsake Israel. Amen. Because Israel is going to be lost without the church, yeah. without the community of God, without that remnant. Yeah. And, and you're watching this podcast, you're, you're part of God's chosen vessel to open the eyes of Israel, to Amen. bring, to, to, to not, don't let Israel get lost. Amen. Yeah? Amen. Bring it back to Israel. You have an opportunity. If you're watching this podcast, you have Amen. an opportunity to, 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 again, to bring the cycle back. Bring it, bring the gospel back, bring God back to his people. Don't, the, the, the church not only forsook the Jewish people, even did worse than that. Persecuted. But it's, yeah, but yeah. it's time the church would support again the Jewish people right. and bring back what is lost. Amen? Right. Amen. And there's so much more that we can discuss. We're we'll going to tackle another podcast of like the, the other aspects. You know, we also, we haven't even touched the uh, Arab society of uh, Muslim and Christian Arabs and so forth and, and, and the refugees. In the final analysis, pray for a revelation of the word of God. Amen. A revelation for, the, for, for Israelis for the Word of God, because it's the Word of God through the Holy Spirit that will change their hearts. Amen. Because that's at the end of the day, He's the one who opens exactly. the Exactly. And He's here. Amen. He's in the Word of God. You can find Him here, you Amen. know, if God opens your heart. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we just ask that you would open the hearts of Israel right now. We just come together, Lord, those who are listening on the podcast, praying with us, that you would open up supernaturally by your Holy Spirit, that you would make Yeshua known to Israel. Make Yeshua known to the Jewish people here in this country and around the world. Open up eyes to see your scriptures. Open them up to read your scriptures again, to actually turn back to the Holy Scripture, to the Tanakh, and, and to open the New Testament to see for themselves. We pray that you would give them a divine curiosity. Pray that you would protect those who are living in the underground, who are living in societies where they're afraid to come out with their faith, that you would disciple them and bring them to the light, bring them into community. Mm -hmm. And we're asking, Lord, would you grow this body of believers, grow this remnant in Israel around the world, in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.